Hey guys there, Softtack here. Today, on this episode of Inside the Gearbox, we're going to be going over how to lubricate and grease a gearbox. Let's get down to it. So the gearbox we're going to be using for this video is going to be a version 6 gearbox out of an Echo 1 P90. This is actually one of my very first airsoft guns. I still have it, works great, it's been upgraded a lot since then, anything from a DSG to a DMR, and right now it's a pretty basic, kind of realistic build with a relatively high rate of fire. It doesn't have a lot of fancy parts in it, but it still needs lubricated like every other gun does. So, let's take it apart and get down to it. So as you can see, I have my version 6 gearbox taken apart right here. Like I said, it doesn't have a lot of fancy parts in it. It does have a really fast motor in it, but other than that, everything is pretty standard. It's got an M110 spring in it. Still though, even builds that aren't pulling a lot of stress, aren't really doing a whole lot, still need lubricated, still need greased, just to make them run at the most efficient at the most efficient level that they can possibly run at. So, this gun has been opened up in like a year and a half, but it's been used a lot since then. So I'm going to re-lubricate the air seal with some silicone so that I can actually get this air seal going back up. I'm going to grease the gears, and we're going to grease the piston rails. Basically, we're going to grease everything that you should when you open up a gearbox shell. So before we get started on lubricating and greasing a gearbox shell and the components within, I'm going to talk about something that you need to do before you actually get to work. So obviously you need to have the right tools, but before that you want to take your gears and you want to clean them off really well. So take a paper towel, take uh, and take your gears and just clean them out really well. And I mean like get in there, wash them out. Sometimes what I do when I, when I have a brand new gun and people want me to really tune it up, I'll take the gears and I'll run them under incredibly hot, high pressure water to rip anything off of them that is on them that doesn't need to be on them. And then after that I dry them with heat and I make sure they don't rust. So. You know, but if you don't want to do that, you can just take a paper towel and clean them off really well. And the reason why you want to do this is because the, one of the things that grease does in a gearbox shell is it collects metal dust, it collects all that grit. So if you're not taking that grit and metal dust off before you lubricate your gears again, you're kind of not really fixing a problem. You're just fixing one problem but keeping the other one with you. So be sure to clean off your gears, clean off your gearbox shell, clean off your piston. Clean off anything before you grease it because you want to remove that dust, that dirt, that grime, that metal dust. You just want to remove it. So the thing we're going to be using to grease our gears in our gearbox shell is Super Lube. Now you can find this lubrication on Brill Armory or Clandestine Airsoft. I'm pretty sure you can find it on Clandestine Airsoft. I haven't been over there in a long time. But this is a brand new bottle. I just got some because I have used all my other... Right here, it's pretty much empty. Um, all jokes aside, this is a really, 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 really great lubricant to use for your gearbox shell. It's a really, really good multi-purpose one too, so you can use it on your gears, you can use it on your O-ring. I've never had any trouble using it on my gears and O-rings together. Some people use different lubricate, lubricants for their O-ring, other people use the same. I have found something that works for both, and that's what I'm sticking with. So for this video, we're going to be using this, and I'll show you how to do it. So there is such a thing as using too much grease for a gearbox shell. Um, I tend to use a very little amount because I feel like that works best. It keeps everything clean, it keeps everything running smoothly, and it doesn't make a huge mess. I absolutely hate opening up a gearbox shell and seeing it packed to the max with grease. Some techs do that, and that's just absolutely ridiculous. And sometimes you get a gun from you know China, like a JG, an Echo One, or an AGM. Sometimes G&Gs come this way too, where they're just completely packed with that green or white grease that's just absolutely disgusting. Gets on everything and doesn't want to come off. So, I'm going to show you the right amount to use and where exactly to put it. So, I want us to really think about how gears connect. And so, what I mean by this is if the lower part of your bevel is touching the lower part of your spur, you only need to lubricate one of these points. You don't need to lubricate both because if you lubricate both, you're just going to make a mess. So, I tend to only lubricate one side and let the grease spread to the rest of it. This makes it thin out nice and easily. This makes it actually coat the gear as well. And I don't use too much, because I mean, you can use too much, and when you use too much, you run out too quickly, and you have to buy more. So, I only use what I need, and that's my rule of thumb. So of course, you have to grease your gears. So you have your four primary gears in your gearbox shell. Yes, your piston is a gear, it's a linear gear, it's so just straight, but it's not the same thing as far as the circular gears are concerned. So when I'm saying gears, I'm referring to these four right in front of you the pinion, the sector, the spur, and the bevel, and I'm going to show you which sides to grease. So the first gear we're going to uh, grease is the bevel. Now we're going to skip the pinion, and this is why. So when I was talking about earlier about how you only want to grease one side, I'm talking about we'll grease this side, and I'll take a little bit of grease, that's, that's a pretty good amount right there. 
and I'll just run it around, making sure to get in the teeth. And then when I get in the teeth, this will transfer over to the pinion gear as well. So I don't need to grease both, I'm only going to grease one. With the excess that I have in my finger, I'm going to run some around the axles. So with each gear, you're only going to be greasing one side, meaning one set of teeth, and then both of the axles. So what this does is it helps me keep the resistance between my bushings and the axles nice and smooth. And it helps, and when I only grease one side like this, then it tends to transfer over to the other gear. So now I don't have to grease two gears, I can grease one gear and get two gears. So that's how I usually do it. So we've covered our bevel and our pinion, both of those once the gun is put together and operating, they will grease themselves. So I'm going to move on to the spur gear. Some people call this a step gear, whatever, I don't care. Um, so I do the same method that I did previously, I just take some grease, run it around, All, again only on one side. I need a little more. And so when I grease the lower portion of the spur, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also spread that grease to the lower portion of the bevel gear. All right, and again, covering the axles. This will also help to keep your shims on there. So when you're, this, this gun's obviously shimmed. And so um, when I'm greasing the gears and I'm taking this gun apart and, and all that stuff, the grease will help to keep the spur, or not spurs, the shims on the gear shafts. So, like I was saying, I have the axles greased, I have the lower teeth greased, which is going to take care of the bevel's lower teeth as well now. So now let's move on to the sector. All right, so we have our sector before us, and this one can be a little more tricky. I usually only lubricate the lower portion of it, which will cover the um, spur's upper portion. So I start usually start about right there, just go around. Same thing as before. Now right here, you're probably gonna tend to get both sets of teeth just because they're on top of each other. But, and this gets messy, but whatever, it's grease. And then with the excess, of course, just coat your axles a little bit. So some people like to grease the bushings right here, the surfaces of them. I don't see a point in that. I've really never seen a point in that. Um, you, you can do it, I guess. It's not really gonna do a whole lot bad, but you're just gonna be using more than what you need to. So, what I do here for the gearbox shell is I take my piston rails, put a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit there. And I just get in where the piston is gonna be sliding back and forth to obviously prevent heat buildup and make the piston slide a little bit easier. But at the same time, what this is gonna do, and this is kind of the point of a little bit of grease too, is that if you do have medical particles breaking loose, they're gonna catch onto the grease on like the walls right there. So I've noticed it helps a whole lot too. So after you've done that, there's really nothing else you wanna grease in your gearbox shell. You don't wanna grease your cutoff lever, you don't wanna grease your trigger contacts. I've, I've seen people do that and I've never understood it. And you don't want to, uh, certainly you don't wanna uh, grease like your anti reversal latch. There's not really a point in that. All right, so moving up, we have our piston. And the only thing I grease in my piston, and even on plastic tooth pistons, the only thing I grease is right here, just right across the teeth. So I take a little bit right here, go straight across the teeth, and it's good to go. So the next thing I grease is the inside of the cylinder, and I use a multi-purpose lubricant for all this stuff. If you'd like to get picky, you can use a silicone lubricant. It works really well for O-rings and air seal components. So I just put a little bit in here, and then, if I can get it in, there we go. And then I just cycle this back and forth to help spread that lubricant. And so if you don't use a whole lot, you're not gonna have any spitting out. But if you use a whole lot, you are going to have a lot of grease spitting out, getting into your bucking, your barrel, and you don't want that. So now we have a really good air seal there with very little resistance, which is what we want. Now this next part is where I do use a tool. I use a small screwdriver to help lubricate around the uh, cylinder head nozzle, which this is gonna help me keep my air seal between my air seal nozzle and my cylinder head nozzle. So I didn't use a whole lot. I used just enough to create that air seal. And now we have a good air seal there. And that's how you test that too. You don't want to test like that because when you test like that, you're testing a uh, you're testing the air nozzle seal against the cylinder head as opposed to air nozzle seal against or around the air sealed nozzle of the cylinder head. So 
Yep, good to go. And of course, take this time to uh, replace any O-rings that you need to replace. Uh, don't be, don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to replace an O-ring. I mean, if it is a good O-ring, don't replace it, but if you do replace it with a brand new one, no harm has been done. So now that we've gone over what you want to grease and how much you want to put on it and where exactly you put the grease on that thing you want to grease, let's go over the things that you don't grease. Plain and simple. So I've never seen any need to, to grease a tap of plate. These have never, I've never seen them break, break more easily because of them not being greased. I've hardly ever broken some tap of plates because they're really strong to begin with, but I've just never seen a need to grease a tap of plate. I don't understand why some people do it. So I've never seen the reason. Um, next thing, some people grease springs, which I really don't understand. Um, maybe that's a dying thing, but back when I first started tacking, some people did that and I never understood why. So. Yes, your spring is a moving part, but it's not really moving up against something significantly. So, I've never really greased springs. Never have, never will. So spring guides, this is kind of a dual situation here. If you have a spring guide that has no bearings in it, don't grease it. No point, you're wasting grease. If you do have a bearing or a uh, spring guide that does have bearings in it, grease the bearings and this is how you do it. You just take your grease, again you take your hand, your finger, and you kind of spread your bearings out a little bit and just jam it in. That's usually all I've done to it. Now, there are ways you can actually pack bearings with grease. And if you do have bearings, you need to pack them with grease occasionally and wash them out because it'll collect metal dust that you don't want to continue to build up over time, especially if you're running like a 60 RPS DSG setup. So about like that is how you want to grease your bearings. Cycle them in and out a little bit like that. And that'll get the grease in there. You do the same thing if you have regular bearings in your gearbox shell, but for this video I didn't have any bearings in my P90 gearbox shell. I tend not to use bearings, especially if they're under 8mm. Uh, so yeah, but if you do have bearings, grease them like that and you're good to go, but if you don't, don't. There's no point. Alright, next thing that you do not grease, obviously we went over the air nozzle. You don't want to grease an air nozzle that does not have an o-ring in it. There's just no point. You're going to get grease everywhere, so don't do it. Next thing, anti-reversal latch. Don't grease anti-reversal latches. They need to work by friction. That's how they function. And they function by having a latch mechanism. So if you grease where all this stuff is, I could see it maybe slipping, but I kind of don't see it as something that would happen very easily. But still, I wouldn't grease an uh, anti-reversal latch. I don't see a point. Springs, again, this is just falls underneath the um, main spring. Concept, just don't grease springs. This is a tap of plate spring for a version 6 gearbox shell. Don't grease any tap of plate springs. And then trigger mechanisms. Just don't do it. They work by friction. Even the par portions where the cutoff lever reaches up and knocks the trigger trolley off to prevent the gun from continuing to fire. So like say you want to fire semi-auto, this is where this concept comes in. You do not want to grease that point because if you do, it's going to create a slippage. So. Grease obviously is a lubricant. Lubricants make things slippery so that they don't have as much friction. This works by friction, so you don't want to grease that, plain and simple. So there you have it, another episode of Inside the Gearbox. Obviously this video is more geared towards those who are beginner to basic techs as opposed to those who are intermediate and advanced. So if you want to see a video on any type of tacking topic, please leave me a comment below. I'm finding it kind of hard to think of video topics nowadays. There are some really great ideas that people have left me with, like really expansive video ideas. But the problem with that is just that. They're expansive, they're complex, and they're harder to make for someone who is kind of busy person. But if you leave me a bunch of different things to do, I can pick out the things that I can make quickly and set aside the things that I can make at a later date. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next episode or video of whatever the heck I do. Until then, stay tuned, Tex.